All right, kindergarten friends, today in our writing, we are going to be talking about adding more details to our writing, about making our writing more interesting by giving our reader more information, more things to know about what we're talking about. I've taken some writing that I've seen in many of your journals than that I've written for you before, and I'm going to show you how I can add more details to this writing. Now, my sentence is a good sentence. It says, I like the bear. And friends, I'm talking about the bear from Jan Brett's story, The Mitten. You might remember that we've read that story and written a description of our favorite character from that story. Now, that's a good sentence, but if I have somebody reading my writing and they've never heard the story The Mitten, that doesn't give them much information, does it? They don't know if it's a polar bear, one of those white bears, or if it's a brown bear or a black bear. They don't know if it's a little baby bear cub or if it's a grown up bear. I have to add more details, more information to my writing to give my reader that picture in their head just in case they've never read this wonderful story. So let's take a look at the bear. I can see him there on the front cover, but I bet that there's a bigger picture of him right inside the book somewhere. I know he comes right towards the end. He's almost the last character. Oh, look, there's a great picture of him. And you can really see lots of details about the bear in that picture. You can see his claws. You can see his big feet and his sharp teeth. That's a good picture to use as a guide. So I'm going to use this picture, and I'm going to describe the bear to you and tell you what I like about him. I like the bear. Let's see. He is, I could say big. I could say he is big, because he is big. Hmm. But lots of things are big, aren't they? I mean, I could say the badger, he's pretty big. You know, um, I could say the fox is big, he's pretty big. But look at how much bigger than them the bear is. So, I'm not sure big is my best word. I think I'm looking for a word that means really, really, really big, like huge or enormous. That way my reader knows just how big this bear is. I'm going to choose the word enormous. I like the sound of that word. So I like the bear. He, there's the end of my sentence, so nice tall capital H on he. He is enormous. Oh, and enormous should be said in a strong voice. So I'm going to use an exclamation mark. He is enormous. Okay, he is enormous. Let's see what else we notice about the bear. I can use the book as a clue. Hmm. Ooh, look at those claws. Those are long and sharp. He has long, sharp claws. That would really give my reader a picture. He. Nice tall capital H because look, my um, exclamation mark marks the end of my sentence, so I gotta use a capital letter. He has long R. Ooh, R is saying R. Hmm, I wonder what's making it say R. Long, sharp, k -k -k. could they see your kale tri see? Oz. Oh, I don't know what's this. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Kind of sounds like ah that O says, so I'm just going to guess it's an O. Oh. Claws. He has long, sharp claws. Period. What else do I know about my bear? Take a look. Ooh, look at all that long brown fur. It looks like it might even be kind of soft. Thinking about what I know about bears, and I know that I have lots of stuffed animal bears, and they're all very soft. 
it. So even though I would never want to touch a bear in real life, that would be a bad choice. I want to, I want to think that a bear would have very soft fur. So he has long, brown, soft fur. I'm going to use this next sentence. Ooh, that's a long sentence. And I'm a little bit worried I'm going to forget some words, so I'm going to give myself a plan. He has long, brown, soft fur. Six words, six lines. I'm not going to try to squish a word up here. It's going to look all squishy and messy. He, fingers they has long. He, capital H on here, there's my ending mark. Capital H. He, <gasps> as, he has long, he has long, soft, soft. He has long, soft, brown. I could stretch that word out, or I could go over to the word wall and get brown off the word wall. It is a color word, and so it's on our word wall. Just I just have to remember that I'd have to put it back when I was done so someone else could use it. Now, I can see the word brown on the word wall from where I am, so I'm just going to copy it. If you couldn't see it and you were writing brown in your journal, you'd go get it off. Go back and reread. He has long, soft, brown fur. Fur. He has long, soft, brown fur. Oh, let's reread my details and see if the reader will have a better picture in their head now of what I'm uh, talking about. I like the bear. He is enormous. He has long, sharp claws. He has long, soft, brown fur. I'm going to add one more detail and then I think it will be just perfect for my reader. Let's see, let's look at that bear. What could I see? What could I say about the bear? Oh, look at his teeth. I'm looking at his teeth. He has teeth that look like they could bite you. He has, what would be a good word to describe those teeth? He has sharp, and let's use a color word, white teeth. He has sharp white teeth. I'm going to drop down to start my new sentence. There's my period. Time to use the capital. He has sharp. Shh, 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 shh. R, R. Or why, I wonder why I is saying its name. I wonder if there's a silent E biting in at the end of the word. I wonder. I'm going to give it a try. Just make a guess that that silent E is jumping back and biting the I to make it say its name. He has sharp white teeth. T E. reread one more time and let's see if this writing with all these details that I gave you gives your reader a better picture in their head of what you're talking about. I like the bear. He is enormous. Oh, what a great word. I can just see how huge he is. He has long, sharp claws. I'm picturing them and I'm feeling a little nervous about them. He has long, soft, brown fur. Ooh, I wish I could give him a hug, but I know that would be a bad choice. He has sharp white teeth. Oh, what wonderful details. I can really see that bear. Even if I never read the story of the mitten. Friends, details are so important to your writing. They help your reader see what you see in your head. And that's why I want
want you to practice using those details. 